I'd like to start this video by apologising for not putting videos up earlier this week. I'd like to put two bursts of videos up a week. But uh, the reason I didn't put them up earlier this week is the same reason I'm covered in cuts and blisters and scars. It's been a busy, busy week. But anyway, I'm back and I'd like to thank Jim for sending in this splendid, ever-ready, four-socket surge protected extension lead because that'll be quite interesting to see what's inside it. But what's even more interesting is that instead of just being mint in the box, this completely sealed package is pre-exploded in the box. This thing has been on fire pretty much inside the packaging. It's... something's gone boom. And all I can really think of here for, I mean, seriously, the flex is, like, all crinkly and this is all crinkly. This has been on fire before it was put in the box, uh, while it was being put in the box. And the only thing I can think of that would have caused that, because obviously it's not been, obviously it's not this that's exploded. Um, I'm guessing that the packaging machine that uses the heat sealing must have gone on fire and instead of saying, oh, well, let's look for products that have been cremated and remove them from the assembly line, it's just, you know, some of them have gone through complete with flames. So let's uh, open this now and we'll examine the extent of the damage. Definitely not so much mint in the box as toast in the box. Let's get this out and take a look. I've never seen that before. It must have been a very exciting day at the factory. Oh, that stinks. So yeah, given that the, the sooty skid mark is on this and all the plastic's crinkled, it must have actually been on fire as it got packed. Exciting. So, let's take a look at this. Yeah, the plastic is all... it really is. It, that has been flames licking around this. Oh, look at that. It's just cremated. really is in bad condition. But anyway, let's take a look inside. Because this is a surge protected plug, my hands are now black. Um, this, this is a surge protected ex strip, and I'm guessing that all they've done inside this uh, is they've probably added a metal oxide varistor, which is a, a resistor that has a high resistance at normal 200, well, in our case, normal normal mains voltage. Well, in any case, normal mains voltage. But as soon as it exceeds a, a threshold above that, it actually shorts out briefly and clip, clips that down. It lowers in resistance and absorbs any sharp transients. So this is using tamper-proof screws, which is always a bit annoying. Let's see if one of my tamper bits will open this. Oh, that is... Ah, God, it's disgusting. Uh, so I'm looking for the tri-wing type bit. That's going to fit. So, will this just be a um, metal oxide varistor? Um, if it is, sometimes they put a thermal fuse in it, a one-shot thermal fuse, the little sort of cream or grey coloured box with the two wires going into it. Sometimes they put that next to the metal oxide varistor because in some failure modes, the metal oxide varistor... Each time it absorbs a pulse, it gets damaged slightly. They can only absorb so many pulses before they have to be changed. And on that basis, uh, if you've got something like a surge suppressing uh, socket and you have a problem with interference, you know, main spikes causing damage to equipment, it's worth just changing that every so often completely. Uh, some of them have a little indicator on them that tells you when it's... Uh, when it's actually damaged, and all, all they do is the indicator is either across the thermal fuse, it's just a little neon indicator, so that when it, it goes open circuit, the LED, or sorry, the neon indicates to warn you that the protection has failed. Or sometimes it's just uh, across the metal oxide varistor, so that when the little electron, the little electronic fuse, the little thermal fuse goes open, then the neon goes out to show that, you know, there is no longer the protection. Um, in the bad old days, they used to just slap these little metal oxide varistors 
across the supply and sometimes they actually got really hot when they failed um, and caused plastic casings to melt. So it'll be interesting to see what approach they've taken in here. I don't know if it just affects particular types of the technology. So this has... So here's the standard arrangement. We've got little brass uh, inserts that connect to the pins here. Of course, it's the UK square pin plug-in socket type arrangement. I, I should also mention that uh, some people say this is a big, ugly plug. And I, I actually like the, the British square pin plug, uh, also used in some other countries, because the flat contact area makes very good electrical connection as opposed to the round ones, um, because it's actually a, a good solid flat surface. It also um, facilitates fairly easy manufacture um, with the sort of flat surfaces, and the fuse in the plug also provides local protection for the flex, and of course the, the sleeving on this and the interlock of the earth pin means that, you know, it's a good design. Now inside this, they've actually got the, a cluster of three metal oxide varistors, including going to earth. So I'm guessing they've probably got, since they've got the connection, they've got um, live, neutral and earth. I'm guessing, and we'll, we'll actually pull this out, that they've just basically got a metal oxide varistor between live and neutral. Uh, live, live and earth and neutral and earth, that might be the situation. I'm going to have to just hike this out, a pair of schnips. So... There's the live is going to two of them. Neutral is also going to two. And earth. Uh, po uh, live, uh, yeah, live is going to two. So live has uh, one between live and earth and one between live and neutral. Neutral between neutral and earth. Neutral between neutral and live and earth. Yep, it's basically just a metal oxide varistor between... Uh, hold on, I'll just do that out. Basically, if that's a uh, live, neutral, earth, they've basically got a transient suppressor, one of these uh, metal oxide varistors just between every connection. Which, er... Uh, Hmm, I'm not overly keen on them having one of these direct to the earth connection because, uh, if, if, you know, if earth failed, that means that it's going to couple uh, a bit of current onto that could also, that could also, if these start do uh, uh, arrest some surges to ground, it could actually result in leakage when these started failing to earth and cause earth, you know, leakage devices like GFCIs or RCDs to trip. Um, but I suppose ultimately it does provide complete coverage for every scenario. Um, but the, again, you know, the, there's no protection against if if this starts failing and starts getting hot. I'm so used to seeing other ones with the little um, thermal fuse mounted up directly next to it. But uh, yeah, it's it's very simple. It's functional. It's it's burnt. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder. I wonder just what scale that little fire was in the packaging machine because that's what it must have been. But yeah, that's a uh, that was interesting enough. It was quite a uh, it was quite good to see, and definitely the first and possibly the last time I'll see pre-cremated electrical stuff that's been packaged after going on fire. Very impressive, quite amusing, really. A little bit more data because data is good. Uh, the type of metal oxide varistors that they were using these are 14D471K. And what that means is it's 40 millimeter diameter and the 471K relates to 470 volts, 47 and 10. The max RMS voltage, because keep in mind that the RMS voltage, the sine wave, uh, actually, if, if the sine wave is rated um, for, say, in our case, it's about 240 volts, then to get the peak voltage off that, uh, 240 volts roughly times 1.41 equals, the peak voltage is going to be 340, so you have to allow uh, a margin um, for that because the sort of upper peak area, you don't want to rate it too low. However, this is rated 470 volts, which means it's suitable for, according to the data sheets, 300, vo 300 volts AC. And uh, the 470 volt rating is the voltage 
uh, at which it will be passing one milliamp of current during testing. The peak current for dissipation is 4,500 amps, which is pretty good. Uh, that's for the, the when it's dissipating a sort of high voltage transient, like when lightning strikes a line or something like that. And the max clamping voltage at 50 amps is 775 volts. That relates to what sort of uh, the voltage that will be across it. It's how its resistance will react to the, the voltage. And something I never really considered, uh, they have capacitance of around about 400 picofarads, which is... In this case, that's about it's about half a nanofarad, so that probably helps with decoupling, uh, you know, sharp transients. However, these things do have quite a dramatic failure mode. That they, you know, it doesn't not just necessarily uh, when it gets struck by lightning because they'll blow in half, uh, but also when they reach the end of life because these can only handle X number of surges. You know, you could have something like a really high inductive load pulsing and zapping voltage spikes on the power line. And each time it does that, it's going to degrade these slightly. And when they fail, they can really go thermonuclear. And I wonder if that's why they've sandwiched the one that's going to take the brunt of that. The, the one between live and neutral is the one in the middle here. And maybe they've put it there deliberately so that the ones on either side uh, provide... A, basically a thermal or fire barrier but I would almost kind of wonder if this casing is going to start distorting you know um, and going a bit brown uh, certainly it's worth checking if you have uh, any type of surge suppressor socket it's worth just checking every so often and perhaps even routinely changing it every few years just as a precaution, not just to protect your equipment but also to protect against the situation that, you know, degradation of these devices could uh, result in basically excess heat inside the unit. But, um, yeah, it was interesting enough. Uh, I think I'll be keeping this little module. I, I'm keeping it because I'm a hoarder. Uh, I can't really think of any use for it right now and I, I think I'd want thermal protection. But the rest of this thing's uh, going in the bin. But, uh, yeah, interesting stuff.